afternoon there we go you can be seated i uh i don't know if you caught what we just sang that last verse it's a mighty prayer let me read that again oh to grace how great a debtor daily i'm constrained to be let that goodness like a fetter bun my wandering heart to thee prone to wander lord i feel it prone to leave the god i love Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Our hearts are prone to wander. They, they wander, they stray. That is why we're here today, in part, because our hearts are prone to, to wander. If our hearts are like compasses, they need recalibrating often. I remember hearing a, a story about two ships that collided, these giant yachts, and they were like, how in the world does this happen? It's a recent story. And they found out that one of the yachts hadn't gotten the compass recalibrated for a really long time. And as days pass and as weeks pass and as months, that little tick getting off north caused a collision. And our hearts are prone to wander. And one of the reasons that we, that we gather here is that we would, we would ask our creator to tune our hearts back that we would find that magnetic north. And that's why today as we sit under the word, as we sit as Alex sings uh, over us, and as we sing with her, as we hear each other's stories, we ask Jesus, tune our hearts, tune our hearts, bind our hearts to thee. So thank you, Alex, for starting us out with that song. My name is Dawson. For those of you who don't know me, or for those of you who do know me and haven't figured it out yet because of the mask, uh, I'm not going to lie, I saw a few people, especially when someone like my dear friend Roseanne comes and not only puts the mask on, but puts the cap and the glasses on, you have no chance figuring out who this person is. So good to see you. And uh, if you do know me, we're back. We're here in the States. So... We are really excited to be with you and our little joint family. We are abiding by guidelines over there because we've been in Lisa's house for the last week. We tested negative. We are the safest people in Tacoma. So if you were safe, we could hug. So we're not the problem. So um, on that note, uh, thank you all for coming in masks. The elders have asked uh, us to wear masks and maintain the distance because we believe uh, that it is good to submit to Jesus's teachings of loving our neighbor and also submitting to the governing authorities. So thank you for doing that. I know this is not a uh, easy time to figure out what that means. If you have any questions about that, please come and talk to an elder. Many of you have. It's been really good conversations. So um, I want us to go ahead and start by, you got to stay where you are. But uh, offering the peace of Jesus Christ, the one who binds our wandering hearts back to the Father, offer the peace of God to someone around you. So you can, if you need help, you can use the peace sign and just say, like, peace be with you if you need. But uh, let's take a minute. Alex will play, and then she will lead us on in songs. It's really good to be with you. What can wash away my sin?
to hear your voices guys oh my goodness this is so much better than leading worship to a camera man <laughs> sing what gift of grace what gift of grace is jesus
you so much for that good news. That you are the one who is pleading on our behalf before the Father that, um, that we are innocent and that he accepts that. That we get to approach his throne boldly because of your sacrifice for us. Thank you that you are at work and that we can rest in you. It is such good news. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Good afternoon, family. My name is Dan, and I'm here to help with our memory verse today. So kids, I'm really going to need your participation, but parents and adults, I need yours as well. So I'm going to need five volunteers. So if you want to raise your hand, I'll call five of you to come up and help me out. We've got one, two, three. Go ahead and come on up. Two more, four and five. You two want to come up? All right. Come on up. Yeah, come on up. We can have a we can have a couple extras here. All right, now I'm gonna. Okay, we'll go. Ahead. So we're gonna say this verse together. So, uh, parents, you've got uh, your memory verse on a little slip like this in your bags, and it's if you don't mind, that'd be great. Thank you. The wind. And so we're going to read the memory verse together, and it's just a reminder of how great it is that it's not through us, but through Christ that we get to live uh, such a blessed life. So the verse goes, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, what I need help with is there's a special way we're going to say it all together so we can make sure we remember it one at a time, okay? So um, let's have, Georgia, you want to go ahead and pick, you can lift one of these flaps here and we'll say it in a very particular way. Come up and go ahead and lift the flap. <laughs> okay, we'll, do, we'll, start, <laughs> we'll start with that one. So we're going to do it the race car way, which means we're going to save this verse really, really fast. I need everyone to be nice and loud as we do it together. Okay, really, really fast. Really, really fast. Ready? The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. <laughs> nice. Okay, who's next? Who wants to pick the next one? So we've done this one. Maybe we should snap our hands. And this one is robot voice. So everyone, everyone do the robot voice. Ready? The wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. <laughs> okay, next one. Go ahead, go ahead and pick. Okay, this is the cowboy voice. All right, everyone with this, ready? The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay, we got two more. Two more. This one. Okay, this is the whisper voice. This is the really quiet one. Ready? The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. All right. And who wants to see the last one at the very top? Go ahead. Go ahead. You guys can all help together. Now we've done it. The top one. What does that one say? Turtle voice, which turtle means it's voice. really slow. slow. Right. Ready? The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. All right. Thank you all for your help. And now you've got so many different ways you can share this gift with everybody. All right, great job, kids, and practice that at home. Thank you, Dan. I'd like to ask Tim to do his whole sermon in cowboy voice, if we could. I have a couple of announcements before Tim comes and serves us uh, by preaching of the word. Um, yeah, we're back, and it's so good to be back. And at the same time, it's so sad to be gone. And so thank you all for praying for us, reaching out to us over the summer. If you were a little bit late in getting here, I'm talking about when I say we, it's me and my family, Laurel, uh, the Joneses. And uh, we had a great summer. 
traveling around the country, visiting churches that we know we will continue to partner with, but uh, most importantly, saying goodbye to our own church. They threw us a uh, one of the most, one, one of the best parties we've ever had um, out in a courtyard in an ancient castle uh, the last day we were there. And so that was very bitter. Um, oh, that was just bitter. It wasn't that much sweet. It was sweet once we got here. So I'll be praying for our church, Cirque Bratska Nitra. And thank you. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your prayers and support over the summer. Um, it's been a long one. We're going on vacation on Tuesday and uh, looking forward to that a lot. So uh, praying for that as well. Uh, September 20th is two weeks from now. And um, next week, we're going to gather here. But September 20th, and then throughout the fall, we have a building uh, that we'll be able to gather in indoors. Um, And we tried to find a very big building uh, that would be safe for this COVID reality. And I keep saying building because we haven't signed the contract yet, but it is in place. <laughs> so uh, you can look forward to that. We're also going to be transitioning out of our Proverbs series into uh, uh, a series that I'm not going to disclose just yet. It'll be a little, little cliffhanger, but something that's been deep in my heart for the last um, few months, uh, a, uh, a series that I think um, will lead us into uh, um, prayer this fall. And so I'll, we'll talk more about that in the coming weeks, but September 20th, hopefully we'll be gathering indoors um, and then that will continue throughout the fall. And Tim, that's my last announcement, is that Tim Geislin is is preaching today and um, we are uh, in our series in Proverbs and Tim is going to be preaching on a topic that's all throughout the Proverbs and that's the topic of friendship. And uh, I'm so glad that Tim gets to preach on this topic because, as I said in our prayer meeting, Tim's been preaching on this topic for the last seven years with his life, and every single one of you are Tim's friend because he's been a friend to you. So thank you, Tim, Um, and I want to pray for you, and then I will let you lead us into Proverbs. Jesus, we are so thankful for the Geislands. Uh, In a few weeks, we are going to to send off dear friends uh, to Lynchburg. And we ask that today, um, as Tim preaches, we could celebrate the deep work that you've done in his heart over um, the course of his life, that he really has been able to leave a deposit of friendship, a deposit that comes from knowing you as his friend. So right now, I ask that you would free him up, give him uh, just conviction around around your word, and um, that it really would change the way we are friends to others by the power of your spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks, bro. Love you, man. So glad you're back. So I'm going to do a lot of eye contact, which is kind of weird with the mask and the the glasses that fog up. So we're going to figure this out. Um, I wanted to begin our time. Just a reminder, we're in Proverbs series. We're kind of approaching Proverbs, understanding and acknowledging that we live in a broken world, but that God, his Holy Spirit, um, through his son, Jesus Christ, he, he gave us his word, and we can look to his word for wisdom and guidance. And so that's what we're going to do as we approach Proverbs and this topic of friendship. I want to start out our time with a quote by a guy named Thomas Fuller. Friendships multiply joys and divide griefs. That's so true, isn't it? When something great happens, you know, something really exciting in your life, isn't it true that a good friend makes celebrating even better? We have confidence that they will rejoice when we rejoice. Like we can just, they're not asking questions. What's our motives? They just like, you're excited about that? I am too. Um, And the same is true when we experience grief. We have confidence that our, our good friends will just dive right in with us. They'll listen, they'll move in, and, and they'll mourn when we mourn. And that's just the thing about a good friend. Um, you have confidence that they are sincerely mourning with you when they're your good friend. And you know who your real friends are when tragedy strikes. And here's the thing, when you, if you have a good friend, 
you have a treasure. And if you're right now, just think about who is my, who are my good friends? Who is that good friend? And I think you know, they are such a treasure. However, it's also true that friendship is risky, is it not? It's even dangerous. Uh, And we had better choose our friends wisely. Here's some wisdom from Proverbs 13, 20. Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools suffers harm. So sometimes we can find ourselves in a group of friends, our companions, that are leading us down the wrong road, maybe even to a really painful, or or when, when something blows up, we get hit by some shrapnel, uh, so it's very important that we are, are just thinking about this idea of friendship. Maybe you haven't thought about it in a while. Um, so I want to just dive into a few Proverbs that really kind of help us uh, think about this. Just it's, it's so like vast, the idea of friendship. It's pretty complex. Because here's the thing. Sure, a friend multiplies joys and divides grief, but a friend can also chop up your joy into pieces and even like be the cause of grief, can't they? It's the people that are closest to us sometimes cause the most pain, the deepest wounds. So Proverbs 20, verse 6 says this, Many a man proclaims his own steadfast love, but a faithful man who can find. You know, we don't really know for sure sometimes when we enter friendship, how faithful is that friendship? Proverbs 19, 4 says this, Wealth brings many new friends, but a poor man is deserted by his friend. Ouch. Man, that's painful. And Proverbs 16, 28 says this, A perverse person stirs up conflict, and a gossip separates close friends. So how do we know for sure? You know, uh, how do we know for sure a friend is faithful or they don't just want your money? Or they're not like talking behind your back. Friendships are risky. And so maybe you've given up on friendship long ago. It's just not worth it. It's possible that you've been so deeply wounded that your friendship skin is so thick that you've forgotten what friendship feels like altogether. You've created a life or just kind of settled into a life of isolation And it seems to work for you. In fact, from the outside, maybe things look pretty good. You may have lots of friends, but no true friends, no good friends. You may have true friends right there in front of you, and you're just taking them for granted. Just haven't thought about it. Haven't thought about it much. So for the next 15 minutes, we're going to think about it. We're going to look into God's word. We're going to ask his spirit to teach us and comfort us. The Proverbs speak much to friendship. So does the whole of scripture. And today we're going to explore three questions. Question number one, why is friendship important? So we're going to look into a reason for friendship. Question number two, what does friendship look like? We're going to explore and look into scripture for a model of friendship. And then we're going to ask the question, how can we be good friends? And uh, we're going to ask the father uh, to help us answer that question. What, how, where do we find the power to be a good friend? Does it come from within us? Or does it maybe come from another source? So let's pray. Would you guys join me in prayer? Father, we pause and look to you as we explore this idea of friendship we all know at least we feel deep in our soul that friendship is really important so father i pray you you'd really give us a reason why is friendship important father give us a model as we really look into what it looks like and then Father, show us, where do we get the power to be a good friend? Thank you for your love, God. Thank you for this church. 
Thank you for the friendships that are here. You're doing a work in this church, bringing us together. God, we love you. Thank you for loving us first. Amen. So question number one, why is friendship important? It's important because we were made for it. We are relational building. Uh, we are relational beings, and we were created in the image of a relational God. God is triune. He even has perfect friendships among the three persons of the Trinity. So, of course, when He created us, He didn't just create us as these these robots or these subjects. He created us for relationship. Friendship is not just helpful; it's critical. It's critical to our survival and to our spiritual growth. I love this passage of scripture when some religious leaders came up to Jesus and they said, Hey, Jesus, what's the greatest commandment in the law? And he said, The first is love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. But then he didn't stop there. He said, And the second is like it. Love your neighbors as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Matthew 22, 36 through 40. So it's interesting that neighbor, loving your neighbor as yourself, that neighbor is essentially anyone whom you have you you relate to. Could be somebody really close to you that you, you have a deep friendship with. Or someone that you uh, just kind of bump into on the street or maybe walk past on the street. And if you really did a deep dive into Luke 10, that story of the Good Samaritan, that's the question that was asked. Jesus, well, who is my neighbor? Um, but it is pretty significant that Jesus would say this. He didn't just say the greatest commandment is to love God. He said the second is, is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Because see, significant way that we put flesh to our faith is in relationship with our friends. We are shaped, as we are shaped to be more like Christ, that carries over into how we love the people around us. So friendships are incredibly important. But maybe the best way to really get a grasp of the value of friendship is to ask this question. Question number two, what does friendship look like? so difficult to define friends in our society, isn't it? From friends, we call people friends on social media, to a friend who would literally give his life for us. There's such a wide, vast spectrum. When we look into the scriptures, we can see some real clear, clear model of friendship. Proverbs 17, 17, it says, a friend loves at all times. So a friend is not a fair weather friend. It's there at all times. Proverbs 27, 9 says this, oil and perfume make the heart glad and the sweetness of a friend comes from his earnest counsel. A good friend will give heartfelt advice. They'll pause and say, man, I wanna, they want what's best for you. And so they'll, they'll move into trying to give really good advice. Proverbs 27, 6 says this, faithful are the wounds of a friend, profuse are the kisses of, of an enemy. See, a good friend wants what's best from you and will rebuke you in love, will help you kind of find reality and get back on the path rather than just kind of being a flatterer, you know, and just throwing you some kisses. Um, I have to share a little story here because I will never forget when I was in the hallway in high school and our, uh, our principal's name was Mrs. Minnie. She was awesome. And she was also my drama teacher. I was kind of her favorite in the whole school, I got to admit. But I was out in the hallway one day, uh, as I would often try to do, I loved, I was pretty much a me monster. And so I remember it well. I really do. I was in the hallway. There's all kinds of people. I was doing something funny. People had my attention. And man, it felt good. And then I just kind of start walking away from that group. And Mrs. Minnie goes, hey, Tim, come here. 
And I remember she kind of pulled me into one of those like alcoves, you know, where there's a door going into a classroom. And she's like, you know what, Tim? And she looked up, she's kind of short, which is so funny because her name was Mrs. Minnie. And she, and it's funny because her, her husband was super tall and I don't know, we used to, it was horrible. Anyway, so she, I said, yes, Mrs. Minnie, what, what's it, what is it? And she goes, you are really conceited. And I was like, what? I mean, I was just aghast. I was like, what, I'm a, what does that even mean? I just had never considered conceited was me. She goes, yeah, you know, I've, I've been watching you. And what you do is you, man, you know, you, you don't see, I remember she actually said these words, you don't see other people. You see yourself only. And I was just like, whoa, okay, well, uh, and I mean, it hurt at first. It, it was a wound of a friend. And I, I really, that has been super impactful in my life as I've gone throughout life trying to say, huh, do I see people? What does it look like? Am I a me monster? A um, few other things I want to share with you. Oh, I love this one. Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. So your friend, even though it hurts, when that iron smashes into the other iron, starts forming you, um, it, it kind of hurts. But that's, that's what happens when we see our blind spots. We can kind of keep this kind of a, a, a perceived comfort. But when a friend comes and is faithful enough to kind of show us our blind spots, it really is a beautiful thing. It helps us find reality. And then I want to share one more because I love this passage. not in in uh, Proverbs, but it's in Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 4, it just gives you this picture of friends and, and uh, going up against some, some various things. So here we go. Ecclesiastes 4 says this, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. And if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though a man prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. I just love that. That it just gives you this picture like, okay, if we slip, they help us up. We're not going to freeze to death. <laughs> if someone tries to beat us up, we can stand against them. And that brings up another story I got to share. I don't know if you guys have ever heard this story, but my friend Randy Sheets and I were at a Starbucks once. We were sitting there having a meeting. And all of a sudden, this guy comes in. You guys heard this story? And he was just so angry. We know he, was, he was crazy. And he runs up to, the, to the, uh, the baristas, and he's just screaming at them. And everyone's just like, we're just kind of watching the scene unfold. Everyone in the whole Starbucks, it was pretty, pretty full. And then they kind of like backed up and like went you know, around the corner or ducked down. Because he was so irate. They, you know, they didn't know what he was going to do. All of a sudden, he turns on the whole cafe. And he's just like, Rrr! And like this lady, all of a sudden, you just felt fear go throughout the whole uh, cafe. There was a lady, I remember, she was right there, kind of closest to him. And she kind of gets up and kind of falls backwards into another chair. And, and I remember looking at Randy. And we were just like, we got to do something. So we both stood up. And we just, shoulder to shoulder, just went up and stood between him and the people behind us. And I remember... It just felt, it was just like, we were like, yeah, we're, we're doing this. And he kind of looked at us. He kind of growled. And he was so angry. He wanted, I could tell he wanted to, like, do something. But he saw the two guys. And he just ran out. And uh, every time I read this, this um, Ecclesiastes 4, though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. I just think of that. So I uh, had to share that. So now that we've seen a model, we've seen some pictures, what friendship looks like, we get to this question. How can we be good friends? And you may be tempted to say to yourself, okay, yeah, this is good. Okay, I got a good reminder that friendships is important. I uh, feel kind of defeated. 
I realize I have to do some work. I got to get out there and kind of just start being a better friend. I got to maybe shed some fair weather friends. Just feel like I got to get to work. Maybe that's you. Maybe you're a performer. That's what I tend to do sometimes. And it really feels, I feel, you know, like kind of defeated. And maybe you're just, you're just feeling overwhelmed when it comes to friendships. And you're just in that place. You know what? This is great, Tim, but can we uh, get back to doing something different? But I want you to hear this. Being a good friend does not begin from within us or working harder at it or any kind of to-do list. It begins with a person. That person is the perfect friend. It begins with a relationship that carries you. And this is where the power is in our friendships. Proverbs 18, 24, here it is. A man may have many companions, worked really hard to build up a bunch of friends, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And whether you have been graced with a true loyal friend or not, every believer in Christ has a friend. A perfect friend, his name is Jesus, and he sticks closer than a brother. And Jesus' friendship with you shapes every friendship you have. Jesus is our friend. In fact, he literally, if you think about who Jesus is, he was God himself who came down to live among us. And there's this scene where he's hanging out with his disciples I want to picture. I want you to kind of go here with me. You're in a room with Jesus. You've been hanging with them, and he looks to you and he says, "No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you." See, to be called Jesus' servant was pretty awesome. He was rabbi, and he was doing some crazy stuff. Yet Jesus confers a greater honor on them. He brings us even closer and he calls us friends. This is pretty profound. And the cross proves his friendship with us. He goes on to say, greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends, John 15, 13. And so if we were to look through that list of friends again, A friend loves at all times. Jesus does this perfectly. He's never a fair weather friend. He gives counsel, heartfelt advice. He gives us his Holy Spirit that really does guide us. He rebukes in love. He confronts us with his, his spirit convicts of sin and shows us our wrongs. He does it with such love and patience. He points out our blind spots and then helps us along the way. He puts us in a, in a family that we can, can grow together. I am so thankful that Jesus calls us his friend. But wait a second, you might be thinking. You might be saying, Tim, doesn't that kind of like reduce Jesus' majesty? And you see him as like a friend. Like, he's not our buddy. He's our king. Like, doesn't that like reduce His glory? Not at all. Because when he calls us friends, he still remains our king. That's what's so amazing about it. He said in that same conversation, you are my friends if you do what I command. Jesus tells us to obey him. We never tell him to obey us. And our obedience doesn't earn, but rather proves our friendship with him. We could so emphasize Jesus's, you know, his kingship and his awesomeness that we forget and we we lose the affection he has for us. We don't just, we don't move into that friendship. We could emphasize his authority so much that we don't enjoy his affection. But this is why Jesus came to earth, to offer himself to us both as a king and a friend. And this is just wild. I can just... I can just see him going, I know you, I can see him probably thinking in his mind, you guys don't get this yet. And they didn't right at first when he went to the cross. But he wanted his disciples to see the cross 
and especially when he rose from the dead and proved he was God, and think to themselves, okay, I understand now. He substituted himself for me under God's wrath, and he did it because he sees me as his treasured friend. He wants us to view what he did on the cross as an affection-filled sacrifice, not just something he did for his subjects, something he did for his friends. And Jesus' friendship, as I've said before, shapes every one of our friendships. So how do we cultivate our friendships? Well, first we start with cultivating our friendship with Jesus, spending time with him, John 15, abiding with him. And it's just that, that idea of time, taking time to be with him. That's what develops a friendship. It's not this big complicated thing, it's just being in your friend's space. And second, We do the same thing with our friendships here. We just take time to build those friendships with each other, even though our our schedules are crazy. We have so much going on. We got COVID-19. It's still such, it's so valuable. Um, I encourage us to do it. And I want to actually say this as, um, as I, our family moves back to Virginia at the end of this month, I want, I really want you to know that one, I'm so full of joy because I see the friendships developing. Our church is moving in such a healthy direction, but I want to kind of give this challenge because we, we are a church that values mission, which is so wonderful. Jesus said, go and make disciples. And we are going to do that as a church. That's what his church does. God is a missional God. We are a missional church. But I want to really challenge you with this, that we never hop over each other to do mission. Mission is so important. Sometimes we can do that. We have limited time. We want to make a difference for Christ. We want to get his gospel out. So sometimes we go it alone. So I just want to encourage us to move into deep relationship with each other, figure out how we can trust each other, love each other, and then go on mission together. And it it actually makes it so much more fun. Even when it's crazy, it's less dangerous. It's way more sustainable. You won't get burned out if we're we're going on mission, Jesus' mission together. And and I just want to encourage us in that. And then I want to close our time with giving you the opportunity to take some time to be with your friend Jesus. Like I'm going I'm to ask you right now just to take a minute of silence and go before uh, your Savior, Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit, Spirit, what would you want me to do in regard to my friendships? So let's all do that together. Father God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, thank you for being a friend to us. Thank you that we are not only your creation, but we are beings that you want to have a relationship with, that you love, that you have pursued, and that you've given your life for. 
so thankful for your love. So thankful for the fact that we don't deserve to have this relationship with you, God. We don't, we didn't do anything to, to make it happen. You did. You, Jesus, you took the wrath of God so that we could be pure in the Father's eye. When the Father God looks at us, it's as if we haven't even sinned at all. He sees the purity of Christ. Oh God, thank you for that good news. That changes everything. Our friendships can be offered with the right motive. Motive to bring you glory. So Father, that's our prayer. That every friendship in this field will bring you glory a little bit more. Because you are worth it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.
to take communion together. Friendship is really hard. Even if you try really hard, it doesn't guarantee it's going to work out. Because you can choose someone to be your friend, but they have to choose you or else it's not going to work. And that passage that um, Tim landed in, John 15, when Jesus says, I've called you friends. And he says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. I chose you. He chose us to be a friend to us. And he chose us to be friends that he would lay down his life for. No greater love. There's no one than this that someone lay down his life for his friends. So right now what we are doing is as we're eating this and drinking this is we're remembering the friend who chose us laid down his life for us. So you can open this if you need some help instructions. There's actually two layers. Do it carefully because it will all spill out. Top layer to get the wafer. The second layer to get the juice. And if you're with someone on a blanket, maybe look at them and say, Jesus chose you. If you have kids, maybe explain what that means. Jesus chose you to be a friend that he would lay down his life for. We can um, open that. And Alex is going to play. I'm going to read the passage in which Jesus invites us to the table. And and then we will eat. The Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread and we had given thanks. He broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
Thank you, Tim, so much for serving us. Thank you for that challenge at the end. Uh, you guys, you have a few more weeks. We have a few more weeks to be um, uh, friends in a very close geographic proximity to the Geislands. And on the 27th of this month, we are going to be commissioning them out, sending them out. So thanks, Tim, again. Uh, if you would, uh, you can stand with me, and I'm going to read uh, this blessing over us that's in Numbers uh, chapter 6, and that'll be the end of our time together. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Have a great week, family. <clears throat>